Throughout history, humans have used horses as transportation, companions, in work and in war. The world will not be as it is today without them. Today we will look at some of the most famous horses in history. Bucephalus was the horse of Alexander the Great and is without a doubt one of the most famous horses in world history. The name is a combination of the Greek words bous meaning ox and cephalus meaning head which gives us an indication of the size and nature of the horse. Bucephalus was a wild horse who was given to Philip II of Macedon, the father of Alexander the Great. The horse cost 13 talents which was almost three times the cost of an average horse at the time, but no one could tame the horse. A young Alexander offered to pay for the horse himself if he could not tame it. Alexander realised that Bucephalus was distressed as he was afraid of his own shadow. While the horse was facing the sun, Alexander mounted the horse to the surprise of his father and his courtiers. According to Plutarch, this made Philip II tell his son to look for a kingdom equal and worthy to thyself, for Macedon is too little for thee. The taming of Bucephalus gave Alexander a great deal of the confidence which would lead to him conquering a large chunk of the world. The pair were inseparable from then on, and only Alexander was allowed to ride Bucephalus. After the Battle of Hydapsis in 326 BCE, Bucephalus died at the age of 30. Some claim he died of old age, while others say it was because of the injuries sustained during the battle. The death of Bucephalus had a big impact on Alexander, who considered his horse to be vital to his military success. Bucephalus was given a burial with military honours and a city called Alexandria Bucephala was founded in his name. Bucephala, now known as Jalem in Pakistan, is also thought to be where Bucephalus was buried. Next, we have the legendary Incitatus, who was the favourite horse of Emperor Caligula, who reigned the Roman Empire from 37 to 41 AD. Caligula's reign was mostly bizarre and cruel, but he certainly loved this horse. Incitatus was sent from Spain to add to Caligula's collection of racehorses. The horse was fed oats mixed with gold flakes and was attended to by a group of 18 servants. Suetonius reported that Incitatus had a stable of marble and a collar made from precious stones. Most bizarrely of all, Caligula supposedly planned on making the horse a consul, and claimed that the steed was a combination of all the gods, and because of this, was to be worshipped. Contemporary historians such as Mary Beard claim that the reports of Incitatus may have been exaggerated, and Caligula likely only told a joke about making his horse a consul. Regardless, it is clear that Incitatus lived a life that most Romans from his time would have envied. Comanche. Our first records of Comanche are from 1868 when the US Army bought a collection of horses in St. Louis, Missouri. Captain Miles Keogh of the 7th Cavalry Regiment bought a horse and rode him into battle against the Comanche tribe in modern day Kansas. The horse would be wounded multiple times but always showed great bravery and because of this Keogh named the horse Comanche. In 1876, the 7th Cavalry Regiment was part of the army sent to the Northern Plains to find and destroy the large Native American alliance that had formed. General Custer had earned respect as a capable commander during the American Civil War where he had fought well for the Union armies. He led 700 men into the hills of Montana. This included Captain Keough and his horse Comanche. As they approached the Indian camp, Custer split his men into three groups to surround the enemy. The federal troops did not know that they were outnumbered three to one. The Native American warriors attacked General Custer and his cavalry in what was known as the Battle of Little Bighorn or General Custer's Last Stand. 268 of the 700 men died and all of the men who were with General Custer died. The only survivor was a horse named Comanche. The Battle of Little Bighorn is one of the most crushing defeats the United States military has ever received and has gone down in American folklore. Comanche the horse was found two days after the battle and slowly reared back to health in Fort Lincoln. Colonel Sturgis gave the following order, the horse known as Comanche being the only living representative of the bloody tragedy of Little Bighorn, June 25th, 1876. His kind treatment and comfort shall be a matter of special pride and solicitude on the part of every member of the 7th Cavalry to the end that his life be preserved to the utmost limit. Wounded and scarred as he is, his very existence speaks in terms more eloquent than words. 
of the desperate struggle against which overwhelming numbers of the hopeless conflict and the heroic manner in which all went down on that fatal day. He also ordered that Comanche shall never be ridden, bridled or put to any sort of work and during all ceremonial marches Comanche will lead the regimental formation. Comanche died in 1891 and is one of only four horses to be given full military honours at his funeral. He was not buried and is now taxidermied in the University of Kansas Natural History Museum. Marengo Jacques Louis David painted the famous Napoleon crossing the Alps of Napoleon crossing the Alps in 1801. In the painting, Napoleon can be seen on a rearing stallion atop the mountains and engraved into the rocks are the names Hannibal, Charlemagne and Napoleon. In reality, Napoleon crossed the Alps on a mule, which likely never reared this spectacularly, but when the artist painted Napoleon, he depicted the general riding his famous war horse, Marengo. Marengo was an Arabian stallion brought back from France after Napoleon's Egyptian campaign. He was named Marengo after carrying Napoleon to victory during the Battle of Marengo. He then carried Napoleon at the battles of Austerlitz, Jena Auerstadt and Wagram. During Napoleon's time in Spain, the horse was able to complete the 80 mile gallop from Valladolid to Burgos in just five hours. In 1812, Marengo was almost lost to a Cossack raid during Napoleon's disastrous invasion of Russia. The final time Napoleon would ride Marengo would be at the Battle of Waterloo. After the battle, Marengo was taken to Britain and died at 38 years old. His two front hooves were removed as souvenirs and the rest of his skeleton is still on display at the National Army Museum. One of the hooves was turned into a snuff box and is still used by officers of the Grenadier Guards when they are on duty at the St. James Palace. The other hoof was thought to be lost until it was found in 2017 in a Somerset farmhouse kitchen drawer. Copenhagen Across the field of battle at Waterloo, Arthur Wellesley, better known by his title, the Duke of Wellington, was riding a horse named Copenhagen. The horse was a successful racehorse in England and named after Nelson's naval victory at Copenhagen. The stallion was brought to Spain in 1813 and bought by Wellington shortly after. At the Battle of Waterloo, Wellington rode Copenhagen for 17 hours continuously and after the battle, Wellington stepped off Copenhagen and Copenhagen tried to kick him in the head. <laughs>